In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a peekaboo swirl and how to apply chrome flakes with the tacket method. The supplies that you will need is a prepped tumbler. I sand mine down and then I pre painted it a swirl color just for added technique. I don't think it did a whole lot for this, but that's up to you on how you want to prep it. And then you'd also need the glitters that you want to use for your swirl. A sealer, I use Rust-Oleum 2X Clear Gloss Sealer. And then you'll also need the Eileen's Tacket over and over. Whatever chrome flakes that you would like to use. And then I also used a thin automotive tape, vinyl for your stencils, as well as epoxy. This is how my cup looked prior to adding the epoxy. It is just a striped kind of swirlish um, blue and black. I like to apply my swirls on my hand turning station. And so that's what I'm doing here. I have my cup on my hand turning station and I'm applying a very, very thin layer of epoxy in order to apply my swirl. The glitters I used were the Glitter Galleries Area 53, and then the rest were Feather Bear Bling, Emerald City, Bridget, Bowie, Blue Lagoon, Sea Nymph, Shockwave, Siren, and Peacock. To apply my glitters in the swirl, I didn't tape it off this time. In one of my other videos, I did mark uh, equally so that I actually applied it in a very equal manner when I applied it but I didn't do that with this one because I just wanted to kind of wing it and get as much on there as I could because I'm using so many different colors so I just went around and just kind of did a fine line for each one of them and then just followed the line that I did for the previous color in order to blend the next color was a time that I swore I would never go back I was blind to the truth, didn't know what I had I was running, I was searching But every place I turned for healing Left me more broken than the last Take me back to the place that feels like home To the people I can depend on To the faith that's in my bones Take me back to a preacher and a verse Where they've seen me at my worst To the love I had at first Oh, I want to go to church Trying to walk on my own but I'm wound up lost Now I'm making my way to the foot of the cross not a trophy for the winners it's a shelter for the sinners and it's right where i belong take me back to the place that feels like home to the people i can depend on to the faith that's in my bones take me back to a preacher and a verse where they've seen me at my worst to the love i I want to go to church I want to go to church Oh, more than an obligation It's our foundation The family of God I know it's hard But we need each other We're sisters and brothers That feels like home To the people I can depend on To the faith that's in my bones Take me back To a preacher and a verse Where they've seen me at my worst To the love I had at first Oh, I want to go to church
In the blink of an eye, life flashed right in front of my eyes. Never knew that the fear could cripple my chest In the blink of an eye, the light left So lonely it is, so lonely tonight is And I wish I knew why, yeah I wish I knew why Once I was done with it, I did go back through and just kind of add a little bit of extra in any spots that I thought needed a little touch up or more coverage. And then after I got done with that, I just used my gloved hand and I patted down the entire cup to make sure that it was all flat for when I applied my epoxy. Prepare for the worst. Hope for the best Won't you steady my heart For whatever comes next So holy it is So holy tonight is Oh now I know I Now I know Once I got completely done, then I wiped the edge with a acetone on a sponge to make sure everything was completely cleaned up. There were a couple little spots that were being a little bit stubborn and had a little bit of epoxy that was a little bit thicker there. So I picked up my little sponge and just made sure that they were all patted down. And then this was a taped cup. So I pulled the tape off as soon as I was completed with adding the glitter. Then I grabbed a tissue, which is just um, a non-lint wipe and put acetone on it and cleaned up any little spots of epoxy that were left over from the tape or that got underneath the tape. The next step in this process is to give it a good thick coat of epoxy to make sure that it gets completely covered. I was able to achieve a thick enough coat with a first um, layer that I didn't need to add a second layer and everything was fairly smooth. There was a couple little bumps and I just gave those little areas a little bit of a sanding to make sure that they were laid down flat for when I applied the next layer. After the cup has cured and the epoxy is completely hard, then you're able to go ahead and apply your decals that you want to use for your stencils. 
and this cup I did use the name Ashley so I applied the Ashley on there and I what I did was I measured in my silhouette the actual name that I was going to put on there and then I did an offset of that name so that that is actually what I cut out is the offset size so that there would be a little bit of an edge around the outside that you could still see the glitter underneath it and then you would have the, the actual decal go on top of that. So that's what I'm doing here is just adding the decal portion. For this cup, the next step that I did was to create a design pattern with the automotive tape. And I want it to, to be kind of a swirl, the opposite direction of how the swirl was that I did. So I went through and just took my time in creating this. It's all free handed. I didn't use a ruler or anything like that. I just kind of looked. The cup does taper. It's a little bit uh, wider at the top. so. It took me a bit of time to get this to how I liked it looking. So it um, it is a little awkward as I'm doing this. I think I removed it and, and redid it a couple times, but um, I just used the automotive tape and taped straight over the uh, decal for Ashley as well and just made it be spaced out as evenly as possible. And I took the tape all the way down over the edge and then I taped back over um, my actual line because I'm taping it off on the bottom that way it didn't get covered with the tacket Who am I that the highest king would welcome I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Who oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am.
The next step is to completely cover it in the tacket over and over. I do a mixture, and some people do a mixture of one to one ratio between tacket and water. I did not. I used, um, I think it was five milliliters of the tacket, and then I only put in about two and a half milliliters of water. So mine is more of a two to one ratio in how much I did, but I'm actually not positive because I didn't completely measure it when I did it but that's kind of what I'm guessing uh, I wanted it to be a little bit thicker so that the flakes would stick very well and I would have a very good coverage so that's why I used a little bit uh, more tacket than some of the other people have been using on theirs um, but I liked the coverage that it did and it worked very well for what I was using it for
I made sure to mix it very well so that it was all completely mixed prior to using it to actual paint on the cup. So I have these little swizzle sticks that are metal and I just stirred it until it was all a good consistency. In order to paint it on, I use these two inch brushes from Walmart and they're kind of flat and fanned out a little bit and they work very well in order to apply it over a large area like this is. And I just dipped it into the mixture and then I put a fairly decent coat on there. When you apply it, it does look kind of white as you're applying it. So you can tell where you've uh, actually put it on when you apply it and you just want to make sure you're getting a full coverage. Uh, that is how I've seen some of the people that haven't got full coverage. I think it's drying or they're not actually getting it thick enough to where when it dries that it has enough of the tackiness to actually adhere the glitter. So you want to make sure that you're getting a thick enough coat that when it dries on there that it's going to be tacky in all places. So make sure you're dipping your brush back into your mixture and getting a good coat on there. And then you just wanna go all the way around. And for me, I had a lot of lines. <laughs> so there was a lot of taping on there and the decals and then the tape at the bottom. So you just wanna make sure that you're getting in all those crevices and all of those different areas where it's taped so that you're not gonna have any spots that are gonna be bald when you actually apply your glitter. So just make sure it is completely covered and then go back over it again after you've made sure it's done just to make sure that it's completely covered. How did we get here? We're cost away on a lonely shore. I can see in your eyes there. It's hard to take for a moment more. We've got to Burn the ships, cut the ties, send the flare into the night. Say your prayer, turn the tide, dry your tears and wave goodbye. Step into a new day. Once the tacket is completely dry, it will be completely clear. There will be no white marks or no milky looking areas because the tacket does dry completely clear. So I um, did hit mine with my heat gun just to make sure that everything was completely dry i gave it maybe 30 minutes and that's also something in order to get it completely perfect is to give it enough time to get completely dry because if you don't let it dry completely you will kind of smear your actual tacket and it'll come off and you don't want it to get gummy underneath your brush so um, just remember that and then what I'm doing here is I used my chrome flakes and a stencil, it's a stencilish style brush. It's a hard, harder bristled brush. And I used that and just kind of went around and applied it in the lines. I used three different chrome flakes in, in my actual design. And that was what was needed in order to get an equal line amount I guess so I went through with one color at a time and did all of the lines that it needed for that one color and then I moved on to the next one and I did come out of the screen a few times as you can see here it was hard to keep it back far enough because the way these chrome flakes work is they just fly so they like literally got on every single thing that I had anywhere near my computer. And if you kind of watch in the video as I'm doing this, you just see little sparkles all the way through the video and they're just floating in the air. I had them on my face, they were on my computer, my keyboard, my screen, they were on the ceiling like of my shelf. It was really crazy. They just literally go everywhere. So um, you can put a catch sheet underneath it like I did, but it really didn't catch anything like the majority of them just float in the air when you're using it so keep that in mind <laughs>
And like I said, the brush that I'm using is kind of a harder brush. It's one I got at Target in a pack of like five brushes, I believe. I don't know that I've seen them still on their website. I bought it a couple years ago. So um, I'm sure you can find one that's similar though. But with applying your actual chrome flakes, you wanna make sure that you're hitting every single little area with it. And it, it does like when you use them, it doesn't actually use up much of them, but you do wanna go over them and make sure you're getting enough on your actual brush so that when you're dabbing, you're not just gonna be hitting the tacket so much. But as you, use the chrome flakes and kind of dab it you will pick up more get more chrome flakes and then you go over that area again until it's smooth so you can tell once you're done with a specific area if your brush isn't dragging then you know that that area is completely covered if it's just smoothed over it then you know that there's no more tacky areas exposed and you can move on to the next area. That's how I did it. I just kept going over it and making sure that I had enough flakes on my brush to make sure it was completely smooth. And then as my brush moved and it smoothed over the areas, then I was able to tell that I was ready to move on to the next area. Send a flare into the night Say a prayer, turn the tide Dry your tears and wave goodbye Step into a new day Break everything you knew Faded out of you Stole a piece of you If I could, oh I would Be a hero Be the one who would take All the arrows Save you from the pain Carry all the way But I know that you pray
you locked down Let it breathe, give it wings, set it free now Time to make your mark, break the prison bars So them who you are Look closely here, you can see those little floaties. They're just floating through the air. And at this point, I was done completely with the application and I removed my tape and I just pick it up and then I pull it straight back so that it kind of cuts that line in there. And it's it was really simple. I didn't have any issues with it. Um, I removed my bottom tape that had put there as well and then just removed each of my um, little strips of tape. Turns into stone. So won't somebody please pass the megaphone. I'll shout it on the count of three. Once I got all of my little thin strips of tape, then I went to remove the decal. And it was a bit difficult because you don't really, like you're not gonna pull or smudge very much the actual tacket portion, but you can if you hit it with like my little uh, utensil that I was using that's kind of like a point on the end. If I were to hit the other areas, you can still scratch it and you can still kind of smear it or smudge it off, but it is pretty durable. You just can't bang it around on stuff or it will, um, it will kind of smudge. So you want to be careful when you're removing your decal portion, which, um, is what I'm doing here. I was trying to be very careful and just make sure that I got 
all of the little pieces off, which it was hard to see them a little bit just because they get kind of stuck underneath there. The next step on here is to apply my decal and I will say that it did pull back like my actual um, transfer tape did pull back some of the what I had applied the chrome flakes what I had applied with the tacket method so I did go back over it after I had uh, actually put my decal on and then pulled it up because I just wanted to make sure it had complete full coverage so after you get your decal applied, just make sure that there's no areas or anything that had come up with your transfer tape or make sure that, well, I guess, and make sure that there's nothing that got smudged or smeared or anything as well when you had done this. Because as you can see, my cup sitting there, it's sitting on what I had just done on the bottom of that, uh, applying the chrome flakes. So it was like a, there was a couple little spots that just because of the pressure as I pushed down my uh, decal it did kind of push on that back side of that cup and so I went back over that with my flakes now I will say with chrome flakes oh my gosh I had the hardest time remembering which chrome flakes I used because they do not look the same on a cup they do not look the same on a cup as they do in the little jars so you might want to write that down when you're using your comb flakes to make sure that you know exactly which ones you used where on your cup because I, I at least three times started to apply it and was like no that's not the right one so um i kept applying it to like a piece of paper next to me and then making sure it looked right before i would apply it because it was so confusing because they do they shift they shift like crazy and they're beautiful but they are hard to match back up when you're trying to match them back up so take note from me don't mini magoo it <laughs> The next step then was to apply my epoxy. Now I did not seal mine. I just went straight to epoxy. Um, I taped the bottom off and then applied my epoxy. And then I just kind of babysat it for a little bit to make sure that it didn't um, fish eye over any of the portions of the cup. But as, because sometimes I do know that with the chrome flakes it can fish eye and separate if you don't use a thick enough coat of epoxy but i used a fairly thick coat of epoxy and i didn't have any issues there was one little spot at the top that kept pulling away but i just watched it and applied it and i didn't have any problems but um, counterculture diy's um, quick coat would have been a good option to use um, had i wanted to do a sealer on it first but this is what it looks like, beautiful. And this is the finished product. I was very happy with how it came out. It looked 
pretty much exactly like I had pictured it in my head when I was designing it. And I just want to thank Ashley for allowing me to make her a cup and giving me kind of free reign on how I did everything. Just gave me the colors that she liked and I went from there. So um, I hope you guys have all enjoyed this tutorial and were able to gain some knowledge in something that I've told you. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Drop me a comment if you have any questions.